All right, every year I get the same questions asked all the time. What do I need to breed reptiles, be it geckos or snakes? Uh, I have a couple of the items here. I'll go over some of them real fast. But uh, this isn't all we use, certainly, but this is what I have always on hand right around the uh, reptiles at all times. So for geckos, I got these uh, little glass dishes. I can use them for water. I don't use them typically for the younger geckos, mainly only for breeders. They're doing a lot of pushing around and have the weight to do it. Get a three pack of these at Ikea for I think $1.99. Your disposable worm dishes, those will be your best friend. I love these things. I'm not a big fan of spending my whole day cleaning dishes, so let's throw it out, new one in. Not too bad. I use these as hides. They're the Dynapack 42P. They fit perfectly in the uh, six quart iris hatchling rack. So just cut a little hole in the front. Perfect hide for your hatchlings. You could use it for your adult males. Females, I provide everybody. Excuse this one for being dirty. I just pulled it from a cage. Uh, I cut my holes on the side. I know everybody says, oh, you're going to get dirt everywhere. But I feel as though I lose too much humidity with my hole on top. So I'd rather just pick up the dirt. I'm not that lazy. So I give all the females one of these. This is a lay box as well as a hide. So there's some of the supplies you need. If you're crazy like me, label maker, everything is kept in records and organized and I have hard copies and electronic copies of everything. You're gonna need a scale. I like this one because I work with snakes as well. So it's got the nice tub. Allows me to put snakes in there and not have to try to worry about putting them in other tubs and tear it out every time. Flashlights. I'm big on candling everything. Hand sanitizer. Spider robotics. I prefer those. I also use the Pro. Herbstat Pro. I like that a lot. Got the uh, newer Herbstat 4 coming in. For working with snakes, feeding tongs. I use different tongs, be it for rats or mice. You don't want to uh, cross your sense up. Some snakes don't care, some will. So it's best just to have a set of tongs for rats, a set of tongs for mice. Uh, temperature gun. I use a PE2 from Pro Exotics. So you just push a button, top of that counter, or the top of this wood right here is 80.5 degrees. Definitely want to pick one of these up. Especially if you're setting up your rack for the first time, you need to know what your reptiles are actually going to be feeling as opposed to what your readouts are saying. I always keep diluted chlorhexidine to clean stuff up. Any snakes get anything, bit by a mouse, whatever, rat, anything that just I just need to clean up and I want to get it a little bit disinfected. There you go. Some Panicure. I always have a couple bottles of this stuff on hand. Doesn't matter who I get an animal from, I treat it with everything because I just don't trust everybody's collection. Not enough where I want to risk mine. Instead of tongs, or I'm sorry, uh, tweezers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, these are good for getting any stuck shed in small places. I got big hands, so a hatchling gecko, really, I can't reach between her toes. Stuff is, uh, Small stuff like that's good for that. Probing kit. I keep a probing kit. I pop and I probe, but I also work with chondros, and so obviously you're not popping those. I'm not a huge fan of popping at young ages. I know everybody does it, but uh, personally to me, I've seen a lot of things go wrong with it, and if I have the time, I'm going to probe it. It's just as accurate, if not more so. You don't have the questionable, uh, is it a female or a male that just didn't uh, evert out. I use shelf liner for the bottom of all of my gecko tubs, um, except for my hatchlings. So I guess that's pretty much just my breeders. So for all my breeders or anything that's too big for a hatchling rack, so about 15 to 20 grams depending on the actual size of the gecko, I throw them on shelf liner. I use these paper towels, put them on one side, they 99% of the time will do their duty on there, just throw that out, replace it. I keep my water dishes, I showed you earlier on the other end, and they're hiding in the middle. Uh, you're going to need cleaner. I use uh, one of these little misters by Exoterra. I use that for getting the, uh, the chondros wet or for 
adding humidity or resaturating the lay boxes to make sure that it's moist enough and the females will actually lay in there instead of dropping eggs in the water bowls for you. Paper towels, you go through those like crazy. I always just use a pitcher of water. It's a lot easier than, I don't know, scooping it out or having water bottles or anything like that. Um, somebody asked me to talk about ways to save energy. The best thing to do is get some sort of quality thermostat. You're going to want to make sure all your connections are good. All my connections are good, sealed off. So you certainly want to make sure that you're going to want to only run, which is what this is for, you're going to want to run it only high enough so that you're hitting the, the adequate hot side, uh, your ambient cool side because you're typically not going to be cooling the other side but your ambient room temperature should be good enough to provide the thermal gradient but if you're using a, um, a thermostat as well as one of the uh, temperature guns you're going to limit any excess wasted heat or anything like that which is another reason I have this out now I tried paper towels I've done the whole thing I've tried sand all that stuff which sands a whole other topic if you guys want a video about that I could do that but so the uh, shelf liner actually will hold heat better than paper towel, obviously for its, its uh, consistency and the material it's actually made out of. It'll actually retain some of the heat coming off of the uh, heat tape. So you don't have to have it set as high to maintain a good thermal gradient, as well as instead of having a hot strip, as if you would on paper towels, it kind of, in essence, actually will give you the gradient as the heat dissipates away from the heat tape you're still going to have it tapering down. So I'm a big fan of this stuff. It's cheap. You can get it in whatever color pattern you want. The only thing I would suggest is do not get the ones that are um, that have the holes that you would typically put in your kitchen because uh, when they poop and pee or whatever, you get your urates going in between there. It's going to be a lot more time than it's worth doing that. So that's really the only things I, I could suggest to you is about saving electricity. I mean, bottom line is you're going to be running you're going to be running heat 24 hours a day for the most part. So can't really do a whole lot there. Your incubators, here's two of the setups I use. I've had this thing for a few years. I don't know why. I've been lucky enough to have it not crap out on me. But you got the MR148. That's, I use that for males. It reads 98 inside. My probe inside will read 88. Female, it's pretty empty right now. We're coming to the end of our season. Um, I use the Nature Spirit, which is the one that's actually hooked up to that Spider Robotics. Reads 83.8. Inside of the tub on the right, it's reading 82.1. So I also have another stand-up freezer that I use for an incubator. Right now I got a, I'm running last-minute tests on it before I start throwing some snake clutches in there. So other than that, I do have other equipment and tools and stuff I use, as well as uh, for my snakes. I keep most of my snakes on uh, sandy chips. So obviously I have sandy chips, I have trash cans, I have all that stuff in here. So when people ask, what do you need? There's more stuff that I need than I can name. Um, last thing I want to talk about real fast is uh, our Wounded Warriors project, the auction we're hosting. It's called Reptiles for the Wounded. That's going to be going on November 7th, and it's going to end November 11th. It's going to be an auction. It's going to be on my Facebook page. Now we have So far, we have about just shy of 10 breeders who have already said they're going to donate animals. Everything from leopard geckos to uh, ball python morphs. I've got some people interested in maybe donating fat tails and some tortoises. So once I have more confirmation on what we have that we will have for the auction. Obviously it's a little far out to know what everybody will be donating. But once I have more information about that, I will certainly be updating you guys on my Facebook page about that, as well as a list of who's actually going to be donating. Uh, obviously, these are the bracelets that will be uh, given out to anybody who donates as well as the purchaser. So whoever wins the auction will be getting one of these bracelets. If you want to see all the um, different uh, I guess sayings or slogans that they have on there. Uh, I have that posted on my Facebook page, a picture with all of them on it. It's not going to be one that you can pick. I'm just going to kind of hand them out. And then if you're donating, you'll also receive one of these Wounded Warrior Project stickers. 
Um, I'm a big fan of the Wounded Warriors project. I've seen what they do firsthand, uh, some of my buddies and everything like that. So certainly a great organization to be a part of, in essence, or uh, helping out, contributing to. So be sure to spread the word about the Wounded Warrior Project auction. It will be in November. I have the information on my, on my uh, Facebook page. Hopefully that all turns out well. So uh, I guess I'll show you something real fast. I don't know what I'll show you. i uh, got a couple ball pythons over here. A bunch of stuff for sale. Uh, let's see. Everybody, somebody wanted to see the whiteout stuff and the Oreo stuff. Uh, here's an Oreo girl. She's got one more dubia in her cage. This is one of the Oreo girls. Sorry, she's trying to back off my hand. So, she's just about at breeding weight. She was just got out of shed, so she's looking pretty good. I'm pretty sure the camera's not picking it up because this corner is kind of shaded. Um, over here you got white out Oreo male. Same thing with him. He's he's looking real good. He's actually getting ready to go into shed, so his colors are pretty doled out. Uh, normally his tail's got, you know, obviously the nice blueberry on it, but uh, he's looking real good. So that's some of our our African fat tail stuff. My favorite girl down here. The striped Oreo. She's a little bit smaller than the rest. Oh, she's going to shed too. Bad day to, to film the fat tails. We are right now looking in the market for a couple more morphs. And uh, after we get back from a little trip this week, this coming week, and picking up some captive hatch stuff, I'll be uh, probably purchasing a couple more of those. But we'll keep you updated on all that. So, hope you guys enjoy the video.